Our next speaker is immediate past district governor, Joanne Hefferman, who co-chairs with, with Luke Schmidt, the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee. Uh, and she will give us an update on this very significant district initiative. So Joanne. You know, when I agreed to do this, I didn't know that I was going to come after Paul Harris <laughs> for crying out loud. But you know what? I, uh, I think it's right. And I hope with my heart that Paul is smiling on us um, at 1030 when, when I'm finished. Uh, first of all, I do want to thank, I, I want to thank all of you for coming and staying. And I clearly want to thank uh, you, Jane, and you, Nancy, and you, Gail, for giving me 10 minutes to bring you up to speed on where we are on our diversity, equity, and uh, inclusion initiative that we started talking about last year and are continuing into this year because we're just not done. Um, you might remember, those of you who attended, the uh, virtual club visit, when I came to visit your club last year, that we talked then about how Rotary asks us through vocational service to work with integrity and then to lead our, uh, lend our expertise to our communities and our world as needed. And then we went on to talk about how Rotary asks that we foster and encourage ethical, honest behavior in our businesses, in our professions, in our communities, and in our clubs, also in ourselves. And that we are in all of those places, honest, accountable, fair, and most importantly, that we treat those around us with integrity and respect and dignity. Now, those of you that attended the uh, District Training Assembly last year, a year ago to date, you might remember that Sigrid Solomon talked about the importance of diversity and inclusion in Rotary and then she just touched the tip of the iceberg when she talked about uh, some of the assumptions that we make and some of the biases that we have that we don't even know that we have. Well, at the end of that presentation and at the end of the district assembly uh, at large, we sent a survey out to all of those who attended and we asked if there was anybody out there who would be willing to help us begin honest, civil, and considered conversations in our clubs first and then in our communities where we actually could talk about what does it mean to treat one another with integrity, respect, and dignity, where we can talk about those assumptions and biases that we don't even know that we have, where we actually can just talk with one another to get to know and understand one another better. Well, the really cool news is 29, 29 of you raised your hands from 22 clubs. And from that group, we put together the uh, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee uh, made up of 13 of your fellow Rotarians from 12 clubs, basically covering all of uh, our areas and our club sizes. We met, we met uh, several times uh, through the year, talking about how to actually go about this. And then in June, we sent out a survey to the members of the clubs represented by somebody on the committee. We did this basically for three reasons. We wanted to gauge interest uh, in, in those clubs, uh, in this topic uh, at all, was there any, to, um, measure diversity in those clubs, and then to get a sense of what our own members thought about where their clubs were 
on these uh, related issues. Well, 139 of those who received the survey responded. And yes, we got uh, a bunch of interesting comments. They ranged from, uh, and I quote here, thank you so much for trying to help us work on these issues, close quotes, to, and I'll paraphrase this one, we didn't have problems before you were district governor and we don't have them now. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, however, however, the majority of the respondents actually uh, thought their clubs, that all of their clubs were good clubs, that their clubs were clearly well-intentioned, but that perhaps their clubs could be more diverse and they clearly needed help in figuring out how to make everyone feel included and welcome. And most importantly, like me, the majority wanted to have an opportunity to be a part of a conversation that would help each of us get to know those in our clubs and our communities better. Now, so as not to put words in anybody's mouth, I want. I want to get to know those in my club and meet those in my community that don't look like me, that don't pray like me, that don't think like me. Those who are of a different race, a different creed, a different age, a different gender, a different sexual orientation, I want to get to know you and I want you to get to know and understand me too. Because when we understand from where people have come and where they're coming from now, then we can begin to accept one another. We can learn from one another as opposed to dismissing one another, I believe. I truly believe that we can stop pretending that differences don't exist and instead embrace them. And then we can begin to understand and be happy to treat those who don't look like us in the manner that they want to be treated. Ideas are born from honest, civil, and considered conversations. Ideas that can lead to collaborative changes, projects, ways to make our clubs and communities better places to pray, work, live, and play for everybody. Okay. So how do we do it? Well, first of all, most importantly, for this to happen, everybody, everybody who wants to participate has got to have a voice. Everybody, people my age, people my gender, people my sex, people my race, people my creed, and everybody else that doesn't fit into any of those categories. Knowing, understanding, and respecting one another, I think, is the only thing that's going to bring about mutual understanding and a lasting change. I'm convinced of it. We don't have to agree. We won't. But we need to be able to talk to each other about the things we need to talk to each other about. We need to be able to talk with those who don't uh, agree with us, as well as those who do, and then we can figure out where we do agree, where we can agree to disagree, and then put together projects and activities that our clubs and our communities can work on together so as to make our club and communities great places for everybody. This isn't gonna happen overnight. It's not gonna happen next year. We're not gonna be done the year after that. 
But I think Paul Harris would agree that if we don't start now, it won't ever happen. Is it friggin' hard? Yeah, no duh. But we're Rotarians. And we clearly can be a part of the solution. So this is what's up. The committee's meeting, second week in uh, September. And at that meeting, we will be talking about a pilot club or clubs that are willing to host that initial conversation. We're gonna talk about how to facilitate it. And then by Jove, we will facilitate one or more of those first conversations. Then we'll step back. We'll uh, tweak it if necessary. We'll have as many conversations as we need in order to get it close to some semblance of being right. And then we'll roll it out to any club who is interested in being a, um, in being a part of this initiative. And it will all, all of this will be done tweaked as needed by clubs based on size and just exactly what those needs are. For those of you who like to know how we're going to get to point B before we start point A and want to know what that point B is going to look like, yeah, this is going to drive you crazy, but hopefully only in the beginning. For those of you who don't like ambiguity and you want to be a part of this, just practice starting to take deep breaths right now. Because the only thing that we know for sure right now is that the pilot club or clubs will come from within the committee. How long will this process, how long will it take us to get the process right? I don't know. Will the process look the same in all the clubs? I doubt it. Will your club want to participate when we roll it out? Well, I sure hope so. Will it matter if you do? Absolutely, yes. For those of you that want to participate as we roll this out, email me. I'm on DAC TV, and all of your past presidents know how to reach me. Join us. We can make Paul Harris smile. I have no doubt about it. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. That was just extraordinary. You're extraordinary. Thank you for your leadership and for your, your work on diversity. And I can't wait to see what comes next. Me either. <laughs> It'll be great.